think that's us. Yes, it is. That's we're us. Live. We're yeah, that's us we're live. Yeah. Hello. Um, in the usual place where I do my book launches, obviously I have special guest. He's so happy to be here. Can you tell? <laughs> Loves being in front of the camera, does our Aubrey. Call the police. So, you know, we've, I've bribed him with this. Mm. Cheese and cake. Mm. Very important. Is that Cockett's cake, mind? No, it's not. I know. Oh, come on. I know. Terrible. Dave will be very unimpressed. Louise will be beside it, herself. It lasts forever as well, Cockett's cake. <laughs> it actually there's, does. When there's a nuclear winter, all that will be left is cockroaches and Cockett's cake. Because it just, it's just <laughs> so for a well book. preserved. Yeah. <laughs> Book four. <laughs> cockroaches and cockets cake. Brilliant. So sadly, no, it's not. Um, because I ate all the cockets cake that we ordered. <laughs> I ate all that for yeah. Christmas. It was delicious. All right. The reason Aubrey came down was just, just to have a chat and have a laugh. And we you know, always good to meet up. Um, so I threw a little question out onto the Harry Grimm Reader Group. And you're all very into answering things, I've noticed. So I've got a load of questions for Aubrey. Not for me, because you ask me questions all the time when I do my book launches and there's one coming up at the end of the month so i'm going to go through the on here the old mobile of the phonage and we'll I'll see what all he's got to say for himself um i'm just going to go through the questions so i hope you're all sitting comfortably and i'll be able to say who's asked them as well it's all very organized do you need cheese and cake before you go are you all right I, well uh, yeah you can pass the plate over here because oh, you're just hogging it at the oh, moment you just help yourself there's a knife yeah. thank you i'll have the tea okay you have the tea, and I've, I will have a little bit of cheese and cake. Right, the first question is from Arabella Marie. So we've got, what is the hardest part about embracing the voice of Grimm? Do you find it challenging to get into his character, or is he much easier to approach now as much easier to approach that, that we, the reader, think he might be? Okay, I see what you mean. There's definitely a soft side to him, as evident by his relationship with his partner, his brother, his dog, and his co-workers. Thank you. So... What's the hardest part about being grim? It 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 used to be hard um, because I used to have to really think about it and get myself into character. So I'd have to sort of pause for a moment and think, right, I'm now got to turn myself into Harry. And but now it I can literally just switch it on and off when I need it. Um, and also because I understand the character obviously a lot more as as we all do as the books go on um the little nuances in his voice when he's happy or sad or angry i know there is a much variation <laughs> because that's the kind of guy he is it's but, very you know it's um th there funny. is there there is it's like when he introduces himself um or if he answers the phone there are times when I sort of think, right, you've got to remember to put the emphasis on, That's right, on his actually. name. Because it's, you know, my name is DCI Harry Grimm. <laughs> so you've got to get that grim. <laughs> so, you've <got> to get, <laughs> so you've got to get that bit. So good question now. No, it's, it's, good. it's become easier. It's, and I, I now kind of hear Harry as Aubrey does the voice, which is quite weird. Um, but it's nice. It's taken on a life of its own. So yeah, there we go. That's that. That's that. And we're moving on to Jocelyn Egan or Jocelyn Egan. Can you ask him how he decides on the voices of each character and how he remembers the idiosyncrasies of each voice? Oh, right. That's a difficult one. It's a question I get asked a lot. I bet it is because you've loads of characters in a book, haven't you? Yeah. So how do you make each one? Yeah. Different? So, firstly, how do I remember them all? Well, <laughs> well dear, because I forget them when I'm writing them. It's... I. Um, <laughs> I write them down is what I do. I have a list, a character list. And obviously with with the characters now in the grip, the main characters, I don't need to do this with any new characters. I write down their name, um, their age, if I know it, and then any background that I might have on that character. And then the accent will quite often. I try not to think about it too much. But their name sometimes will give a clue to the accent. So the origin of the name, for example, might, you know, if someone's called Jones, then they might have a bit of a Welsh accent, to be honest with you. Um, it, sometimes I look at a name and look for the origin of the name. I will literally go and Google the origin of it to see where they might come from. If it doesn't tell me in the book. Um, most of the time it's a very, very instantaneous thing. I try not to think about it too much. So a new character will pop along and I'll just try a voice. And 
nine times out of ten it works sometimes it doesn't and sometimes uh, if you're not careful and you haven't gone through the entire book and double checked on um, the uh, sort of the where the character comes from it might say further in the book that actually mr jones comes from glasgow in which case you're in a bit of trouble if there's a bit of a buzzing going on it's my phone in That's the background fine. ringing so it's clearly um, not mine no one phones me <laughs> so the fact that the truth of the matter is i don't know where they come from um they just literally it's a bit like dave's characters when he's writing the books write themselves um and that happens with the characters they pop into my head well there you go that's quite similar to the hell i do it really mm, yeah yeah, yeah it is very similar because um, you, you, i use the origin of the name so if i want the character to be of a type so if like it's a posh character so i mean i'm re researching sort of aristocracy yeah so like there's all the names from like old aristocracy that i'll be using so that kind of thing yeah fort there of you, you go fort of you smythe yeah that is well interesting isn't it? okay now we move on to angela holtz Who's asked, <laughs> who is your favourite author to narrate for? And then she says, she's then put, will he dare say anything other than you? <laughs> yes. Well, you know. Um, I don't think you have a favourite, surely. Um, okay. I can genuinely, truthfully say that um, I do like dave's work and it helps the reason for that yeah and and so yes he probably is my favorite author but the reason for that is is because um i now find narrating dave's books incredibly easy um because i don't i literally don't have to think about it the characters are already there they're well established they're in my head so it's so it's easy so it makes my job a lot easier so there's my that's fair. Well, on that then, this leads into, I can't say this name, what does that say? Eelisade? Ooh. Eelisade? Yeah. Eelisade Park. We'll go with that, Eelisade, tell me if I've said it wrong. Um, what is Aubrey's favourite fav Grimm book? What's your favourite one? What's your favourite Grimm book? I, I don't. Quite, I quite like, I think, Shooting Season, I still have a bit of a soft spot for. It's funny, every time a new book comes out, I think, oh, this is... This is better than the last one. Yeah, kind of thing. It's, kind of, um, I hope. And um, now you forgive me here, Will because I? Um, I there is there is one I like, and I and the name of it escapes me all of a sudden. <laughs> the, the the one that was a bit spooky. Oh, Restless Dead. Restless Dead. Set in the house with the yeah. bit in the middle. That's yeah, missing. I like Restless Dead. That was fun to do. And I like the. Um, oh, you see. This is, I, I have, so many, it, but not I have so, so many books in my head. The Singer. Which one's that? The, what, the, oh, with Alid? Yes. Um, <laughs> even I'm forgetting. Yeah. <laughs> and what's that one called? Death's Requiem. Death's Requiem, of there course it is. Yeah. Bear, please bear in mind, <laughs> I have a lot of books in my head at the moment. Not not just Dave's, but yes. No, I, I like those. Um, I, I like the, the subject matter. Yeah. But I, I genuinely did like bones a lot that was fun you know was a lot, yeah a lot of fun to do. yeah so angela holtz asks how long do you usually go in one reading before having to stop for a drink oh how often do you make mistakes do you have to sort of you know what's that guess okay is it i guess that depends on the book which one you're at in the series so like i guess it's easier now with the new grim ones than it was with the first yeah and it's different with the new series to one with it's just, you're established with yes it is um the process um, I think people are always surprised when you explain to them the, the process of recording an audiobook. So every finished hour takes about five hours um, to get a finished hour. Wow. Um, because you have to um, record the audio, fix any mistakes, as, which, which we do uh, as I go along. Something called punch and roll. So if I make a mistake, I immediately go back and fix it. Then once you've done that, I run uh, the recorded chapter through a piece of software that checks it against the text. So um, uh, it, it just checks for any mistakes. I have to fix those mistakes. Then I have to produce the audio. <coughs> Excuse me. And then by the time you've done all of that, it's about five hours per hour. That's amazing. <coughs> um, so 
I can go about and wait for it, folks. The amount of time I can go before I make a mistake is about two and a half minutes. You wouldn't have thought that, would you? You probably think I could go half an hour. No, <laughs> you go about two and a half minutes and then you make a mistake. Generally, it's stumbling over words. Um, is a, Like I did when we started this. Yeah, yeah, yeah very, very common. Um, so far as needing a drink, constantly hydrating. There's a, you're always a glass of water by my side. Which I didn't um, give you, did I? No, but that's fine because we're not narrating. No, true. Yeah. Here's one from Lisa Devlin. Are there any characters that he would like to kill off? Oh, oh. now then. It's ponder someone, isn't it? I, I, don't, I, I, don't, I don't think so. I don't think I've got any in mind that I want to kill off. I mean, no. they usually get killed off. That's the point. Yeah, the point yeah, no. There's... I haven't put anyone in there that I definitely want. Well, well yeah, it's no, also we no. can't say too much because you might be watching this. And you've not read no, all. No, ge genuinely, no one, no one has annoyed me that much. None of, well, none of the characters. The author, though, Just give him a slap every yeah. now and again. But <laughs> you know, um, no is the answer. So well, there we go. Um, what have we got next? Oh, okay, this one. Obviously, you've done. This is from Kay Hay. Kay Haig. That's it. Kay Haig. She's interested in what other book series you do. Because obviously, you do this one. Um, so, what other book series do you do? Have you been offered, or in, are you interested in film or TV stuff? She's has loads of questions here. Okay. Um, do you, how do you decide on what projects to do? And also, thank you. She's just saying thank you. Oh, how lovely. Thank you very much for saying thank you. Um, yeah, so, you know, what other series do you I'm, do? I'm just the mouthpiece, folks. That's, this is the genius. So, oh, um, yes, I do a number of other, um, a number of other crime books, including um, by authors such as Alex Scarrow, uh, Wes Markin, Dave Moody, who does horror stuff, Ian Rob Wright, which is horror stuff. Um, so yes, I do work with other authors. And um, if you are an author looking for a an audio book narrator, please call 0898. Um, <laughs> yeah, so I mean, it, it, this is my job. This is my full time job. Um, TV work, no, I would, I'd, I'd love to do radio plays, that kind of thing. Um, although I don't have formal acting training for that, so that probably would 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 never happen. Um, I have done uh, various bits of TV as a as a as an extra. Um, I was telling Dave earlier on. I sang on the theme tune of a Disney um, a series called Gallivant. You can look that one up. Yeah, if you if you if you look that up on YouTube, um, the the fat blacksmith. Singing away is me. Is him. So, yes. Um, Noodles come to say hello. She likes to be central hey. attention. <clears throat> me? Yeah. <laughs> She's an idiot. Dog. Yeah, me. But yeah. everyone knows Noodle, so here she is, centre stage. Right. If he was asked to play, this is Jan Burgess. If he was asked to play Harry in the TV series, would he do it? No, because I'm far too good looking, <laughs> and I don't think I can be bothered with the prosthetics. Because um, Jan can't imagine anyone else doing the voice. You see. Ah, yes, I see what that's you mean. That's just the way it's, it is. Yeah. But that's that thing. Everyone hears the characters differently. That's why books are so amazing, because in every book you read, you see it in a completely different way to someone else. So a book yeah. is a billion different... Whoever, However many people have read the book, that's as many different ways of seeing the book. So, you know... They'd also um, have to use some really weird software algorithm to make me look slightly taller, a lot thinner... <laughs> And about 15 years younger. And all the scars. So, yeah. So, um, <laughs> no, I mean, obviously it would be it would be lovely to be asked, but right, I know go. I'm not the right person for the job. So. Right, we've got... That's interesting. Pauline Quinn. Does he pre-read the books before recording? And how long does it take? Well, we know... It. So if you've got an eight-hour book, and you've got five hours per eight, so it's about 40, 45 hours to record a book, I guess. Yeah. But do you pre-read the books? I think you good, don't so much now. Good you? question. I used to. Um, and if I'm working with a brand new author, yes, I will. But, sorry, I've been distracted by noodles begging for You're cheese and ketchup. Cheese. <laughs> um, I don't pre-read uh, Dave's books, and there's a, there's a very good reason for that, and that is because I really enjoy reading them, <laughs> and like you, I want to know what happens next. I don't, and, and so when I'm narrating the book, I'm just as surprised as you are when uh, something happens. And 
I have told Dave this in the past, but there have been times where I've sat and blubbed in <laughs> at my computer and cried because something has made it's me. Mush. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's you know, and I kind of have to stop and wipe the snot away and and start again. So, um, in an ideal world, yes, of course I should pre-read them, but um, I I don't, and I hope that I get away with it. No, yeah, that's okay. good. People seem to like it. Yeah. I didn't. Good question, though. Yeah. Um, these kind of run on from, I guess, what we've just been saying. Um, one's from Mandy McCarthy. She asks, do you, both of us actually, do you both picture Harry the same way or you have, or do you have no clear picture? And then Nolene Watson says, does Aubrey wait with bated breath for your books being finished? So they're kind of all of that, that kind of area. So Mandy McCarthy, do we both picture Harry the same way? I like. I don't think anyone pictures a character in the same way. Subjective, it's, isn't it? Yeah, you've all got your own view of how he looks, and I'm not even sure I quite know how he mm. looks as such. I couldn't sit down and give you a picture of him, and I, it's probably the same with Aubrey. Probably the same with you. No, I mean, there's, <clears> there's this. You have a superficial idea of just this guy who's obviously, you know, not massively unfit. He, he can't. He's constantly going on about how unfit he is, but he's obviously not. Um, with a with a with a messed up face, you know. Um, but that's as far as it goes. I mean, it's, pretty much, yeah. It's um, it's in there. Um, what what was the second part to that? There was you said there was a. Um, or do, uh, the next one is Nolene Watson's asked. Does Aubrey wait with bated breath for your books being oh, finished? Oh God, yes. He pesters me. Yeah, yeah. I, one of the first questions I said to him was, "Next book. Next book. When's it back it from the editors? <laughs> I'm waiting." So yeah, it's I do. as bad as yeah. you lot. I'm terrible. Yeah. So yeah, that's that's that one. Right, Sheila Moore. Does Aubrey like Wednesday Dale and Fruitcake? The answer is yes. And mm. if you don't, there's something wrong. Because mm. it is amazing. So that answers that one. Right, Nichelle Veldkamp. Wondering how you do the voices. Are they all you, or are there any computer post editing changes to the voices? No. 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 Post editing at all. Um, it's all done live, all done on the fly. Um, I don't use any kind of processing, you know, to affect the voices. There are um, various compressors and things that you use um, just to get the sound quality right on your voice, but okay. I don't use anything to... Not CGI to your voice. The, the answer is no, no, no. no. <clears throat> And Nichelle's also asked about what your favourite books to read, but we've kind of covered that. Zombies. Zombies. He does like your zombies. Zombies. Dead stuff. Dead people walking around again and eating yeah. other people to stay dead, but alive dead. <laughs> That's what he likes. I do. <laughs> Bell Walker's a bit weird. Yeah. You've got to love a zombie, haven't you? Just... Bell Walker. I don't know why I said it like that. Like I was announcing her um, to play the island. Bell Walker. Name rings a bell. Yes. Right. I can't think of any questions that haven't been already posted. Can I just say that your voice is like a cup of thick, warm, hot chocolate and a warm hug? Ah. Oh. Thank you for bringing the Grimm series to life. There I, you go. Does that make me the Barry White of the voiceover world? I don't know, does it? Oh, baby. Yeah. <laughs> That's a really nice compliment. <laughs> Thank you very much. And yeah. we've got the final one here from Bobby Pinnell Hodges. Some of the great names. Yeah. I that sounds like a, off, that's though, a proper I? character in a yeah. book. Yeah, Bobby Pinnell Hodges. <laughs> Must end up dead terribly. Okay. Does Aubrey develop a connection or affinity with any of the characters he becomes? Yes. And does this make it easier or more difficult for him? Both. Well, I can answer that for myself as well. Mm. Because a part of me wants... Obviously, a series has to, at some point, come to an end. Um, exactly. What? I know, <laughs> but... At some point, there has to be an ending. Um, but I don't know how, and I miss the characters. So when I get back into a book, I always look forward to writing them again. And they, lots of people say, oh, they become like friends. And they are kind of alive in my head. So I genuinely care about the lives they lead. So I'm very aware that I want something nice to happen to them and have the, let them have good lives. Even though bad things have to happen, because that's conflict and all that kind of stuff, I also want them to have a decent... Even though they're not real... <laughs> It's really important to yeah, the main yeah. characters. That's why they're a team. That's why I've written them that way, I suppose. They are friends and they support each other. Yeah. Because to me, that's what I want. It, it, Soft, really. It's, um, as I said, you know, there are times where, you know, I get emotional. Uh, I mean, I can't, I'm, I'm not going to give any 
specific examples because I might give something away for somebody that hasn't read books. But when something bad happens to a character in the book that you've you've grown an affinity with, you know their background, you know what they've been through. If something bad happens to them, it's upsetting and um, it upsets me. So, yeah, def definite, um, uh, I definitely feel a connection, which is really a bit odd, I suppose, because I'm feeling a connection to something that really doesn't exist apart from in my mind or in Dave's mind or the reader's mind, if you like. So, but, I mean, that's part mm -hmm. of the point of the books, really, it's to the get magic. that emotional um, connection between the reader and... Some, and some people call it magic, game. folks. I call it black magic. Voodoo. It's something you do, weird. Voodoo. Voodoo? What? Do you do voodoo? No, I do no. judo. <laughs> I've said that for a while. <laughs> do you do judo voodoo? No, I do judo. Do, do judo. Anyway, that's the end of those questions. That's it, done. Good questions, folks. How good was that? I like that. Yeah. yeah. Maybe do this again. Yeah. Maybe we won't. It's a mystery. Anyway, there we go. Happy with that? Yeah, I'm. I'm happy I, as long as I so hope. There, I right? hope the 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 readers, the listeners are, are on the happy. other side. Um, if you have got any more questions, uh, hang on to them. Yeah, <laughs> don't send them to <laughs> send them on a postcard <laughs> to anybody but us. <laughs> no, but we might. You know, it, we need to do more videos and stuff. Mm. But anyway, there you go. Thank you. I hope you've enjoyed that. We certainly have, and I'd better get back to a. Uh, Book 14. Yeah. I need the next script, mate. <laughs> I need to pay for my next holiday. Unbelievable. <laughs> Unbelievable. Right. Thanks, Aubrey. That's been fun. Pleasure. Thank you. <laughs>